Hello. Today I thought I'd show you how to make a block that I've discovered called hovering hawks. So I've been having a little trawl through some traditional block shapes and things, although I'm not familiar with the traditional colouring placement. So what I've usually done is I've just got the outline of the block and then I've started colouring it in um, on my piece of paper with my pencil or coloured pencils or something. Just playing um, and coming up with something that I quite like but using a traditional piecing. So this block was originally is originally called Hovering Hawks and I guess you can see that there's some shapes hovering around there. And so I've actually used four colours. I've gone yellow, orange, dark orange into a red and then a background. So it's an, going to be an eight and a half inch, it's going to measure eight and a half inches which means that when it's sewn in it'll finish at an eight inch block. And we've just got lots of half square triangles to make and there's some plain squares in there as well. So I'll just quickly show you how to do those half square triangles. There's a couple here that I've already made and I've got some here ready to make. So we're using two and a half inch squares and we're going to take a plain, uh, sorry, a background square and one of our colours and lay them right sides together. But on the back of the background square we could help ourselves by drawing some lines. Um, so I've actually already done mine, but I'll show you what I've done. This is so that we can make this half square triangle square um, from two and a half inch squares. So I'm going to draw a line right through the diagonal. So from point to point, I'm going to lay that ruler on right through those points and draw a line. I'm just using a mechanical pencil, which I find really helpful. And then I want to draw another line half an inch away. This is so that we're actually going to be trimming away this part but I thought we'd save them rather than just waste them. So I'm going to lay a line of my ruler that's half an inch in right along that line that I've just drawn so that I can draw another line half an inch away from that first line so that I end up with two lines half an inch apart but one of them going right through the diagonal. So I've already prepared some of these ahead so I'm going to go to the sewing machine now and we're going to stitch both of those lines. We're going to stitch the longer one first and then we're going to come back and stitch the shorter one. So we can chain piece these. There's a few of these to do in this block. Um, because I've used the four colours, you need uh, two of where I've used the yellow, three of the orange and three of the darker orange and then only two again of the red to do the sort of placement that I've done. So you can see I can just feed these through so from point to point. So you could make a whole long chain of hawks presumably. And somewhere there's some scissors. No, no scissors today. Here they are. Right under my nose. And now I'm going to come back because I want to save that little triangle and so that second line and I'll show you in a minute when we cut that off how that works. So again we can just pop that chain through just go from one to the next. So you could get a whole lot of these ready if you are making a lot of blocks like this. Maybe watching TV or sitting chatting or sitting in the sun. Who knows? But you could get a lot of these squares prepared with your drawn lines on ahead of time and then you can just do this chain piecing. You could do quite a few just chaining them through. Okay, now I'm going to cut those apart. And we're going to cut them in half and then we're going to press them. So what I'm going to do is cut halfway between the two lines. So that should be half an inch apart those two lines. So I'm going to lay my quarter inch marking line right over my first longer sewing line. And I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch away from that sewing line which should be halfway between the two seams. So I'll do that on all of them. And I've just done four here. I have already done some for the block. I didn't think you needed to watch me ever. And now so when we open that out we're going to get that nice half square triangle that's two and a half inches square which is the size we're after and this bit here that we've trimmed off because we've done that extra sewing line you get a smaller one 
So they can be used. I'm saving. I'm saving all those. I've been making quite a few of these sorts of uh, quilts using the two and a half inch squares and the half square triangles. So I'm saving all those for a project later on. So we don't need them in this block, although they'd be possibly good in a border or something. So now I'm going to take get the iron and I'm going to press those and we're going to press the seam towards the colour. So as I said, I've already done some because you obviously need more than this for a block. I've got a couple here plus some others that I've done already. And so now we need to join them up to make our block. And I've already done a couple of the rows of the block. We've joined the squares into rows. And I think I went that way. So that's that row. And I've probably done this row down here. So I'm just going to put together these other two rows so that you can see how it all goes. So I often find it's easier to lay the whole thing out. Now you have to watch this one. These triangles suddenly change direction. Like, not like that one, <laughs> like that one. We want them going the darker on this side here, but all of a sudden we want it on the top side that on there. And the same in, in that row. And this one is round this way. So just keep an eye on which way things are going, otherwise your hovering hawks will be hovering possibly in an unnecessary formation. So that's my top row done. So I'm just going to do these two rows. So I'm going to piece those two together and then I'm going to piece those two together so that I can just pop them through one after the other. So as I said before, this block is going to measure eight and a half inches because we've got the two and a half inch squares and there's four across so it's like a 16 patch block. Pick this one up. Just don't turn them around when you pick them up because otherwise you'll sew the wrong sides together. Trust me I know all about that. And then I'm going to do the same with these two as well. And this is one of those blocks where when you put lots together, they start forming a little bit of a pattern. I'll show you a small quilt I've made shortly using them. Now I'm going to join the next lot together. So we had those two together and we had those two. So I do like to keep an eye on how things are going with my block and keep them in place, otherwise it's so easy to turn a piece around and it's facing the wrong way. So I'm joining these two pairs together now and then we'll press them and join the strips up and then we'll have a block. You could make this in scrappy colours. I've chosen to do it in these four sort of blending colours. So now I'm going to, to press that. So because I've already started doing some, I've pressed that row that way. Mm -hmm. And so now my next row, I'm going to press the other way. So I'm going to turn that around. That way. And then this one will go this way, so that you're alternating the direction of your seams, basically, so that when you join them together, the seams will nestle in together nicely. And this one's going that way. So we'll get those joined up together now. So again, I'm going to join them together in pairs. So that row is going to go on there, and this one is going to go on there. I'll go to the machine. Using a nice little quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just nestling these seams. I can feel them because they're pressed in opposite directions. I can feel them when they're sitting together nicely. And that 
just helps keep everything set nice and straight. And now I'm going to pick this one up. And again, make sure that you haven't turned anything around so that you're sewing the right bits together. It's not helpful if they're not right. And this all those seams in. And now I'm just going to check that everything's looking okay and join those two lots up. So back to the machine again. Join them up, then we can press it and our block is done. I'm going to press all the seams in one direction, mostly because it's easier. And look, because we've nestled those seams, we've got some delicious points sitting in our block there. Nicely matched at the corners. And here we have a second block so you could there's a lot again a lot you could do with that you can alternate them turn them around you can have things going all over the place um, in my case as I'll show you I've made a small quilt I've turned them I think so that my darks are together I've just done four blocks on this quilt that I prepared earlier and so this is my quilt with my hovering hawks and I felt that they hovered quite nicely like that. Um, so it's, it's the four blocks and then I've just popped a little border around the outside edge. So that's my hovering hawks. It's an eight and a half inch uh, finish, oh sorry, an eight and a half inch block but it'll be eight inch finish when you sew it into something um, using two and a half inch squares. And what could be more fun than a bundle of hovering hawks? Thank you.